Now, my apologies if some of this is duplication of what you already know. Some of it will be for sure for some of you. Um, but there were a number of things put into the Clean Water Act specifically intended to bring uh, Great Lakes issues into source water protection planning for drinking water. And um, I'm going to review a few of those things and talk about where they are today in terms of whether they've happened yet, whether they're yet to happen, what's the landscape. I absolutely stand to be corrected because, unlike Rick and many of you in this room, I don't sit on a source protection planning committee, and it may be that in some of your regions this is happening more so than, than it appears uh, on the landscape. So first of all, um, one of the things that the Clean Water Act provides is that, um, and I should preface this by saying a number of the things in the Act are at the minister's discretion, whoever the minister of the day is. So the first one to address is um, to form a Great Lakes Advisory Committee. Um, that has not yet been done, and uh, Sila, as well as I know a number of you, have been advocating that it should be done. And we've been very... Um, averse to the idea that it's sufficient just for the chairs of the source protection planning committees that are on the Great Lakes to chat among themselves and call that the committee and to call that sufficient. One of the reasons that we don't think that works is because that's inside the people. That's very much the people who are already engaged in the process with one kind of set of issues at the fore um, talking about what they're already doing and it doesn't provide a forum for uh, basin-wide issues, whether we're talking one lake basin or the whole Great Lakes basin, to be articulated and um, considered across a range of interests. Uh, so we continue to advocate that that should be done. We have heard, and I'm, Christopher can correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't think we've had any um, positive response to this, but we have heard that um, <coughs> there's consideration to doing it next time for the next five-year plans. We really don't think that's sufficient. We'd like it to be done now, even if some of the work is happening now that would inform plans later, um, at least it should start at the camp. Um, the second uh, power that the Clean Water Act provided specifically on Great Lakes was the um, uh, ability for the minister to commission Great Lakes specific subject reports from uh, source protection authorities. So that's an interesting um, power. Again, I'm unaware that the minister has done this yet specifically, at least under this authority. It's not to say that um, source protection planning committees and authorities won't be including some Great Lakes issues in their evaluation and in their plan, which we'll get to, but um, to say that um, there's been uh, no use of that tool to specifically commission a report dealing with some kind of an issue. But I just wanted to mention it because I thought it was important for you to be aware that that tool is there and that the minister could be um, encouraged uh, you know, to request specific Great Lakes reports from a range of committees, let's say on one lake around one issue that people are dealing with. Maybe um, on one lake commission reports dealing with you know, um, the level of sewer treatment plant, um, you know, tertiary, primary, et cetera, and uh, whether they're dealing with a particular um, issue of concern on that lake. Can I just ask a quick quick question? That's only the minister who can ask commission those, or can the public commission those? That's support? the minister. Okay, yeah. Um, and then uh, we have um, the ability to establish, for the minister, to establish water quantity or water quality targets for the Great Lakes. Now, it's been assumed that that would be done on the advice of a Great Lakes Advisory Committee, and it's been assumed that that's one of the reasons you would set up a Great Lakes Advisory Committee. And so some of the pushback has been that it's perceived to be premature to be working on targets before the assessment reports evaluating threats in each of the particular um, regions are into the ministry. That's one of the arguments that's been made um, for not setting up the committee yet and then obviously not setting up any specific targets. Well, if, if, we, get, if we take that at face value, then at least for water quality, it might be appropriate for people to start thinking about looking at a range of the assessment reports, the, the threats and assessment <coughs> reports, to say maybe there's enough information now to do some advocacy to the minister to start thinking about setting targets, um, which could be you know more general or, or more specific, depending on what the issue is. Um, so maybe radioactive substances would be a great 
great one to have. <laughs> and uh, advocate some targets that are perhaps different than the drinking water standards, although that would be, uh, you know, that would be a pretty steep uh, road to uh, climb to get them to do that. Um, but the advocacy could be done around some specific issue. Um, similarly, water quantity targets. Again, it's been argued that until we get the rest of the tier three water budgets in hand and some of the monitoring that's eventually supposed to happen under the um, Great Lakes Charter Annex, and so on, that we're not in a position to set lake-wide water quantity targets. Um, but nevertheless, given that there are certainly areas within the Great Lakes that are water short, um, it wouldn't be inappropriate to be setting some Great Lakes water quantity targets that go upstream, in my opinion. So um, again, those tools are there, and yes, it's minister's discretion. <coughs> um, and I also wanted to mention that we're not aware of any process being set up yet to start to look at preliminary work <coughs> establishing those targets. I don't want to say that the ministry is doing no thinking on that, but we're just not aware of any, of any process uh, on that. Um, however, I do want to make sure that I don't, um, and you probably discussed this already earlier in the day, but there is a, a current series of consultations taking place um, by MOE and MNR, uh, and on the MOE side, especially under the, um, the, late, the uh, Land and Water <coughs> Policy Branch, around a number of water quantity and related issues pertaining to the Great Lakes Charter Annex, um, water conservation, interbasin transfers, a whole bunch of things. Uh, that's been a very, very, very um, intensive consultation, and um, so we'll wait to see what comes out of that. Um, and as well, I presume you've gotten to it the other day that the Ministry has just posted um, a consultation, <coughs> consultation document on the EBR within the last week or so uh, for comment. And um, uh, I have to confess, I haven't even had a chance to go through it yet, so I can't say whether it gets into anything like That's this. The one with the three ministries? Yeah. Yeah, Agriculture, MNR, and uh, Emily. Right. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so now the other thing that is in place is that the Clean Water Act um, does require that the terms of reference for source protection plans um, consider the existing agreements related to the Great Lakes in the case of all source protection areas with waters that flow into the Great Lakes. And as far as I know, when we reviewed the terms of reference, that had been done at least in the terms of reference. I haven't assessed, I'm not sure if anyone at CELA has assessed how well those are playing out in the in assessment reports, but in the terms of reference they were um, set out, um, at least by name of agreement, you know, very high level. Like it, it didn't go below that and say this is the kind of issue you should consider under this agreement, uh, or otherwise it would have been up to the Source Protection Planning Committee to turn its mind to, well, how does this agreement relate to us and what issues might we have vis-a-vis -vis that agreement, whether that be the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, the um, Great Lakes Charter on Annex and, and its implementing, implementing legislation, et cetera. Um, and then under um, Section 22.2 of the Act, uh, the source protection plans are required to include policies intended to assist in achieving certain Great Lakes targets if the minister so directs. And again, we're not aware that that's happened yet, but it will be an opportunity for advocacy if it starts to look like that should happen, that people would be able to point to that and encourage the minister to set some specific targets vis-a-vis -vis particular planning regions and their issues um, down the road once there are targets. Um, and uh, so let's say down the road, based on climate change modeling, uh, there was a, a, a Great Lakes water quantity target set for Lake Erie, for example. Then you could go back to the planning regions in Lake Erie and say, what does that mean for the policies and measures that should be in the plans for Lake Erie? 